Ladies and gentlemen, this is part two of the Doctor Docker's lecture series uh, presented by my good friend Satin. And in this lecture, we are going to learn about how to create your own image using Docker. And welcome to Texi Tutorials. Hello, friends. Hope you all are doing well and welcome to the lecture two of this Docker series, what is Docker? In this series, we are learning about Docker and Kubernetes. And uh, this is lecture two of that series. If you haven't watched lecture one, then please go and click on the link above. Uh, it has a lot of details and a lot of basics about Dockers, right? And it's a very interesting lecture. Let's do a little bit of recap. What did we do in the first lecture? So in the first lecture, we talked about technology behind Docker, why really Docker is needed, what is a container, and we looked at into some basic Docker commands. We also looked at you know, how to install Docker client and Docker server on your machine and how to get started. If you haven't done already, go to download Docker client and server. In this session, we are going to create a Docker image and tag a Docker image. So far in the previous lecture, what we did, we downloaded a few Docker images from Docker Hub and we used those images to create containers out of it. In this lecture, let's just create our own image. Okay. So to create an image, we need a Docker file. And what this Docker file contains, it contains a bunch of stuff that is required to build the image and then after building the image to build a container and to run your container. So once you specify or create a Docker file, you pass on that Docker file to the Docker client. The Docker client in turn, it passes on the file to the Docker server, Docker server in the backend, it does its own magic. And then it creates a Docker image. We will take a look exactly what is happening behind the scenes. What does a Docker file contain? So Docker file, it contains a base image. It contains some dependencies and configuration required uh, for your container. And then it also specifies some startup command that once your container is up, what are the first commands that it is going to run? Okay. So let's create an image to run Redis server. Okay. So let's take a look at a Docker file. So I have created a Docker file here already. Let's take a look at it. And uh, you can, I'm using VI, but you can use any editor of your choice, whichever you feel comfortable with, right? So in the Docker file, first you specify the base image. And here there is a base image, which is provided by community or the Docker hub. It's called Alpine, right? And Alpine contains a very, many, very, very minimal set of packages uh, required for an OS, okay? So, that's Alpine is the base image from which we are going to create our own image. Then second one is the run command. So run command, what it does is uh, here we specify the run command and in the run command, what we are doing is that we are uh, downloading Redis um, into our image, right? And then third, the CMD, we are specifying the startup command that once our container comes up, what is the first command that it is going to run, right? So this is your Docker file, right? Now to build an image, all you do is you say Docker build and dot. Now when you specify the dot, it looks for by default the Docker file. You can name your file anything other than Docker file uh, and over here, instead of dot, you have to specify your file name. Okay, so let's see what is happening now. So here it says that step one, which which it is, you know, building or downloading the Alpine, right? Let's take a look. So this is the step one from Alpine. So it is pulling the Alpine image, right? And then after that Alpine image is downloaded, you will see that there is this, you know, a big number, digest SHA, and there is this particular number. So what it is actually doing is that after pulling the image, 
it is creating a temporary container okay now after that what it does is it runs the second command and in the second command what it is doing is that it opens a new container right uh, from the previous temporary image or container that it had built and then it downloads this redis and install the redis into it right redis into it and after that you will see that you know it removed this in initially it created this uh, temporary container it downloaded the redis image here right uh, all this fetch and then installing redis and uh, the other stuff and then it is removing the intermediate container okay then after that the final one for the step number three it again create one more container right add that command and then it removes the intermediate container and then finally it builds basically your uh, image okay so now if i want to run this image this is my container id or my image id right so let's see if i say docker run and let me give this and see what happens see there you go so here you have created your own image and from your own image you have created the container okay and now exactly let it, let us see what is happening behind the scene let's see what is happening behind the scene so in the docker file the first line is from alpine and the from alpine what it does is it pulls the alpine image it has its own file system snapshot and alpine it contains a very very minimal version of operating system with bunch of folders in it the second line run apk it goes ahead and then it downloads redis right so this is how basically your image will be modified that it will have the base alpine image then on top of the base Al alpine image in the file system snapshot it will contain redis also right so that's the run command then after that the final one which is the cmd right which tells uh, your image once the container is built what is the startup command so then it will contain the startup command as well so this is how basically your image is getting built first the from command it downloads or pulls the alpine image then it adds the redis on top of it and then your startup command is getting added on top of it so now, now we have built our image and from the image we can run uh, our containers create a container and run the containers but one thing if you notice every time i have to provide this kind of image id right and it is hard to remember those uh, that kind of image id so what can i do instead of providing this image id every time right so what i can name or tag the image right and to tag the image what i need to do is uh, i again you know when i'm creating my um, image at that time i can provide um, a tag right so this is how the command look like and i'm going to run the command and show it to you right Right. So here, um, I use the build command to build the image. Then I provide uh, option minus T, flag minus T. That is that I want to tag the image. And then after that, this first one, right, where it says Satyan CK, that's the Docker ID. That's my Docker user ID, right? And after that, whatever I want to name my image. And then here I'm providing latest, but it is the version number. So you can provide any version number that you want, v1, v2, vt, v3, whichever it is. By default, if I don't provide, then it is going to take latest, but I'm just providing the latest. And then you have to provide dot, and dot is for where your Docker file is 
uh, located right so and if I hit enter so my image is built right and if I want to run uh, that or create a container from that image I just provide this right and let's see see so it's very easy so this is how you tag the image right so friends in this class we looked at how to create your own image and create containers out of your own image and also to name or tag your images right in next class we will look at uh, some more fun stuff uh, how to create a meaningful containers or application using node.js right and in the meantime if you haven't looked at uh, our first lecture please go ahead take a look at uh, first lecture <clears throat> that's it folks i hope you learned something new from the series if you did please like please don't forget to like like subscribe and provide a nice comment you can follow me on facebook I have a few interesting groups. You can check out my Udemy course on JavaScript and React. You can follow my blog and you can tra translate this video for me. Uh, it's pretty easy. The information is in the description. And if you like, you can also become my Patreon. And here's the link. And thank you.